What's up guys? Welcome to G Whiskey. My name is Jeff. Now this is a channel where I offer my thoughts and opinions on a specific whiskey and once in a while I'll throw in a clickbaity list too. If that sounds interesting, hit subscribe down below and with that out of the way, why don't we jump into our list. Today we're talking about five discontinued gems that you can still find. Maybe. So it's a list today. We're going through five discontinued gems that you can still find. Uh, some basic rules before we get started. First and foremost, and this should go without saying, uh, everything on this list is going to be a whiskey that I personally think is delicious. Obviously, I'm not going to recommend whiskeys to you that I think are bad. Uh, so everything here is not only a whiskey that I love, but it's also a whiskey that I personally stockpiled. Now, my second criteria is a little bit harder to quantify. Everything on this list, as I said, is discontinued, but can possibly still be found in the wild. Now, a lot of my viewers complain about limited availability in their area, even when it comes to standard releases. So I'm sure some of you out there won't be able to find some, potentially all of these whiskeys, which is unfortunate. I did try and make this list something of a mixed bag where I tried to include some whiskeys that I thought had a decent likelihood of being found, but obviously no guarantees. Beyond that, anything goes really. Some of these were standard releases that got discontinued, others were brought out as limited releases. All that matters is that they were around, they were good, and you might still be able to find them. Keep in mind that as is often the case with discontinued whiskeys, a lot of shops out there will be jacking up the prices. However, if you're lucky, you might still be able to find some of these at reasonable prices. Now all of these are delicious whiskeys, but if you manage to find them and they're like double their original price, I'm not going to tell you to grab it anyway. Of course, the amount of money that you want to spend depends entirely on you, but yeah, hopefully you manage to find them when you're not paying too much. I decided to limit today's list to just five whiskeys, but honestly off the top of my head I could probably throw out like 20 discontinued gems out there and there's certainly much more than that. It's an unfortunate reality of the whiskey world nowadays where a lot of the best stuff out there either comes and goes or just goes. So I'm sure at some point down the road I'll be putting out more lists with the same theme of discontinued gems just because there's so many of them out there to cover. So yeah, why don't we hop into this list and in the meantime if you can kindly leave a like down below that'd be greatly appreciated. So we're going to kick things off with a couple honorable mentions. Our first one here is an honorable mention just because it's a Taiwan exclusive, which is unfortunate for those of you who might want to buy it, but I got to brag about this stuff. I got to show this stuff off to you guys. This is the Glenlivet 13 year old cast strength. We've got two releases here. Our one at the back came out in 2018 and I guess it had a pretty successful run because they followed that up in 2021 with a second release. Both of them are exceptional. Personally, I happen to prefer the 2021 release, but really, both of them are stunners. Some of the best sherry bombs you can get just ever. Next up, we're looking at Tamdu Batch Strength, some of the older versions of the Tamdu Batch Strength. So I've got Batch 1 here, but you can look for Batch 1, Batch 2, or Batch 3, all of which are exceptional whiskeys. Now, the reason this is only an honorable mention is because they're still making it, and the new Batch Strength whiskeys are still really good. But the older ones were a little bit less polished and a little bit more hefty in my opinion. But don't overpay for this, like I said they're still making those new batches and the new batches are fantastic. I just found with some of these earlier batches the whiskey had a little bit more weight to it, um, but it's not worth a massive bump in price so if you find it but you're being overcharged, skip it, just go for the newer ones. And that is it for our honorable mentions, so why don't we hop into our proper list. My number five pick is going to be Federcairn 16. This was a 2020 special release. Now I don't know how many bottles of this were put out, but it was a limited run. Now I actually don't know very much about Federcairn. I don't have a lot of experience with the brand or with the distillery. This is actually the first bottle that I've bought from them. I do know that I think in 2018 they rebranded and we have our fancy new packaging with our 16 year old here, which I think looks pretty good. Anyway, I picked this one up on a whim last year and I was very pleasantly surprised by it. This is an interesting whiskey. Now, they actually made this using chocolate malt, uh, which is basically heavily kilned barley. It's an interesting production process. Look it up if you're interested. Um, it's the same kind of barley that they used to make Glen Morangy's famous... Signet? Sig Signet? Signet? Signet. This one was matured in bourbon barrels and then finished in both port and sherry casks, so it's had an interesting production process, and the result is a very full, sweet, rich, satisfying whiskey. Um, it's also very modern. Um, yeah, I was genuinely surprised and delighted by this stuff. As I mentioned, this is a 2020 release, so quite recent, uh, but at least in my city, most of the shops near me have been picked clean. I did manage to find a couple bottles uh, in a little hole-in-the-wall shop across town, so lucky me. But yeah, availability for this one will be quite spotty. 
good luck tracking it down. It's an under the radar whiskey, but it is genuinely delicious and worth checking out. Next up we have Highland Park Dark Origins. This is one that I have reviewed on the channel before. I'll link it up there if you want to check it out. Now in that review I stated that this is one of the best affordable options that we've ever seen from the brand. It's delicious stuff. It's officially a no age stated bottling, but it is rumored to be around 15 years of age or so. This is going to be a deeply sherried Highland Park. It was matured in 80% first fill and 20% refill sherry barrels. We also have that beautiful heathery peat in there, as well as that malt forward or barley forward profile that I always love in Highland Park. Um, on top of that, we have a layer of full, rich, balanced sherry in here. Beautiful stuff. Now, this one is an odd case because it was actually discontinued way back in 2017, but for some odd reason, it's still in plenty of shops around my city. And, you know, I've checked on Facebook groups and sort of online communities. It seems like plenty of people can find this bottle in other markets as well. Of course, results may vary, but yeah, it's a beautiful whiskey. It's still somehow reasonably priced. It hasn't shot up in price either. I have no explanation for that, but I'm definitely not complaining. So yeah, one to check out if you see it. Next up, we've got one of my favorite 18 year olds, or at least it used to be. We've got the Glenlivet 18 with us. Now this one is a pretty low ABV whiskey. It comes in at 43%. Uh, it's also chill filtered and it's colored and I don't care. This one has been a favorite of mine for years. This used to be affordable, widely available and genuinely delicious stuff. Unfortunately, I think it was back in 2019 or so, Glenlivet decided they wanted to rebrand and they relaunched our 18 year old here. Initially, I was okay with that. I thought they just changed the bottle but not the recipe until I picked it up at the shop one day and noticed that our 43%, which is already low, had been brought down to 40%. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know that I am sometimes okay with 43% whiskeys, although of course I do wish they were higher, but when you lower that ABV down to 40%, you've effectively neutered your whiskey. Now this one, I was always happy to buy it at 43% just because it had such exceptional flavors and balance. But 40% is too low for me and I'm not likely to buy the new edition of it anytime soon. Um, I'd much rather stockpile what's left of the old stock to enjoy at a later date. This one. This one will be missed. Um, and I'll say this, if there's any whiskey on this list that has a chance or a better likelihood of being found by the masses out there, it's probably this one. Like I said, this used to be widely available and mass produced, so there still should be plenty of bottles for you to find out there. Um, but yeah, this used to be one of the best value buys in the 18 year old category. I was really sad to see it go, so pick it up if you can find it. Rest in peace. Our number two is going to be the Glenmorangie Alta, which is another one that I've reviewed. Now this one, I don't feel got the love or the respect that it deserved. It was one of the less celebrated of the private editions, but as far as I'm concerned, I think it was one of the best, if not the best. This one is a 2019 release. I believe it to be the last of their private editions. It's the 10th release. Of course, since then we have had special editions from Glenmorangie. We had our Tale of Cake last year, but that wasn't released under the banner of private editions. So I'm not really sure what's up with that. Anyway, it's excellent stuff. This is a cast strength or almost cast strength expression and it's made using a kind of yeast that was discovered on the Glenmorangie estate and apparently the strain of yeast was completely new to science which is kind of cool. So as you'd expect, a lot of the marketing around this bottle was focused on that yeast. They talked about how yeast is an often overlooked element in whiskey production which honestly is probably true. But as far as I'm concerned, this one just tastes like a really good Glenmorangie. So I'm not really sure what kind of effect this special yeast had on our whiskey, but honestly, I don't care. This whiskey is so full, rich, complex. It's a great display of the Glen Morangy House style, but you have that intensity kind of turned up to 11 on it. As far as I'm concerned, this is Glen Morangy at its finest. Definitely a bottle worth checking out. Our number one is a whiskey that you definitely didn't see coming. This is from a very new distillery. I've got their second release with me. This is the Ardnamurkin AD slash 01.21.01, which just rolls off the tongue. This distillery is owned by Adelphi. Adelphi is of course known for their independent bottlings. Uh, they got this distillery up and running in 2014. Uh, our second release here came out earlier this year. It's a follow up to their inaugural release, which came out last year and sold out really quickly. And since then, they've actually put out a third release. That one came out back in April of this year, 2021. I haven't been able to find it yet, but when I do, I'll definitely be snatching it up. In the meantime, I am extremely happy with what I've got here. Beautiful whiskey. Uh, this was matured in 65% bourbon barrels, 35% sherry barrels, which were a mixture of Oloroso and PX. 
It's oily, it's flavorful, it's complex, it's extremely rounded and very easy to drink for something that's only five, maybe almost six years old. Uh, now it is, of course, a limited release from a very new distillery, so releases like this tend to get snatched up pretty quickly. I believe they made just shy of 15,000 bottles of this stuff. I don't know about the distribution. I don't know how much luck you'll have in finding it. I don't know how popular the second release is, although I don't think it's quite as popular as that first one. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful stuff. I haven't reviewed it yet, but you can expect that review out shortly. I don't want to spoil too much, but I will be giving it a good score. Um, yeah, keep an eye out for this one. So that's it for today's list. As I mentioned, this is definitely a topic I'll have to come back to. This might be the first in an ongoing series. There are always great whiskeys being discontinued, which is depressing when you say it out loud like that. But it's an unfortunate fact of life. So um, yeah, this might be the kind of thing I put out once or twice a year. There's always more to cover on this subject. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I wish you good luck if you plan on going out and hunting down any of these bottles. Now, of course, there are loads and loads of discontinued gems out there that I did not touch on in this video. And as I said, I do plan on doing a follow-up video at some point, so I do want to hear some of your suggestions. What were some whiskeys that you fell in love with only to see them discontinued? What were some limited edition expressions that you were sad to see go? Let me know down in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys.